the offense first. We've got Chase Cookets, the uh, quarterback, Maurice Alexander, the all USFL uh, returner and wide receiver, and Jordan Sewell, uh, one of the, uh, one of Chase's main targets all year, who's uh, ninth in the league in receiving uh, yards and has been consistent all year. So, uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, start off with uh, any questions? And then, uh, and as soon as you guys get done, you can go ahead and. I just first off, how, how is the uh, how's the back after this week, and um, what was the process for you on the field uh, taking up session while, okay, while CJ Costello was out there for you uh, trying to get loose? Uh, back starting to feel uh, better each day. You know, I think the, one of the ten, just uh, for precautionary reason, just to well where the spot was and where it was kind of bruised up. But um, no, KJ did a great job. You know, steps in, drives us down there. Obviously, we uh, we turned the ball over, but. Um, um, down there on the goal line, which, you know, he had nothing to do with there. But he was doing a great job operating the offense. And we talk all the time, communicate constantly. He's a really smart kid, so I, I love having him there with me. Um, and, uh, yeah. Hi, Maurice. You know, all USFL returner, you had the game-winning touchdown. And, uh, but besides that, you had a, a completion during the game, I think. And it, was, it was a pretty good pass to Titus Bardo. So, Case, are you feeling that, that fire under your now that you know Maurice might, might be coming for your job. Oh yeah, well we had a, a stretch there. We we, we didn't have um, a backup quarterback for a, a couple weeks, and Maurice was taking some of the scout team looks for me, and uh, I I was about to pack up and just leave because I, I was really worried about my job security there. That's for sure. <laughs> well, then you guys, obviously Birmingham's been a great host city for for the league and for the teams. How good does it feel, though? You guys spent two, three straight months in the same hotel room, in the same city, seeing the same things. How good has it been to get out to somewhere different, see something different, see some different four walls around you for, for all three of you guys? Yeah, I think uh, Birmingham did a, a fantastic job hosting this. I think the first thing I noticed was the humidity. I was glad to get out of that. That was probably the first thing I know. I got out here, and it was a little less humid, so it started getting a little hot there the last few weeks. Uh, but uh, no, we're we're very excited. Uh, really cool city Cleveland is, and, and Canton as well. So um, I, I'll let these guys talk about it a little too. But I mean, yeah, uh, Cleveland's been a great city. I think for a lot of guys, it's a refresher being in a being in Birmingham for two or three months. It's uh, nice to see a new city, new faces. So I think the guys are liking it so far. I wanted to ask you about a particular sequence from um, Saturday's game. So um, you had an opportunity for a, a big shot um, there right before um, the uh, general's kickoff or punt return for the touchdown where um, you know had a, had a chance for the touchdown and didn't really uh, go your way. Then on the next drive, you guys had a solid possession and got a score and then were able to um, take the lead. So I was, uh, you had a great completion to Jordan on that drive. I was wondering if you could just speak on a little bit um, you know, that time when you guys were sort of recovering from giving up that punt return touchdown, you know, what, what that was like on the sideline for you guys. Yeah, I think uh, any time you have, like, momentum shifters in the game, uh, it's important to kind of just stay calm, you know. And uh, I've said it a few times now, I like to tell my guys, just one play at a time. You know, no, it doesn't matter if they're up one score, three scores. You know, we can only control that next play. So uh, we got a bunch of playmakers on offense. As you can tell, you got two of them here. Uh, tight ends, running backs that can all break out for, you know, 50, 60, you know, big touchdowns at any point. So um, I don't think there's there's any time in a game where we get too down on ourselves and we just stay up and focus on the play at hand. Jordan, can you talk about the chemistry that you had with Case? I mean, you started off with uh, one quarterback and then transitioned to another. Yeah, I think the chemistry with me and Case, uh, I think it started – since training camp uh, with uh, B. Scott. He was there. Um, we had chemistry, too. But um, the first play when Case came in versus New Jersey, he threw it deep on a post, and we connected right away. So I think ever since training camp and even in that game, that throw, we just it's something connected, and it's just been going the whole season. Are these same questions to you? Uh, it's the same. It's been the same since training camp. Uh, and Case is kind of. The two, so yeah, I worked that way up. Any questions? Yeah, 
questions here in the room? Great. Case, uh, throughout the season, you've uh, kind of started your reputation for kind of the kind of the tough man persona a bit here. Um, how do you uh, how do you approach that? What's your uh, mentality in a game? You know, kind of taking so many so many of these big hits it seems uh, week in and week out. Oh, you know, um, I've always liked getting hit. You know, it kind of keeps me in the game. You know, I think uh, my dad. <laughs> You know, he always kind of taught taught me to you know be be tough and get back up. Uh, you know, no matter how hard you're hit. Uh, you know, when it comes down, to, we are football players, right? So, um, you know, you're gonna get hit. You're gonna get hit hard. Um, and uh, my job at quarterback is to get these playmakers the ball. So, um, just because I'm getting hit, as long as the ball is coming out on time, um, that doesn't matter. You know, it's uh, you got some some really good defenses, some some really good pass rush players in this league. So um, other than that, you know, you just got to focus at one play at a time and, and keep getting the ball out. I'm kind of glad you spoke on that because he know he hate when he don't get out. <laughs> um, guys, just tell me about you guys being, having a chip on your shoulders and also being under the radar. I mean, it's okay. It's kind of, we just kind of taking it one day at a time, just focusing on the Philly stars and not worrying about everybody else and what how everybody else think of us. And I, and I feel like us having a chip on our shoulder get us over the top and brought us together and jailed as a team at the right moment. And now we just here, we got four quarters to get it over the top and put all that to rest. Yeah. The best part about the playoffs is, you know, your record resets. So, uh, you know, we started 1-0 this, this last week, and we get a chance to go 1-0 this next week, and that's all that matters. Uh, hey, Jordan, you were, uh, back in the day, you were uh, all-time safety, I think. You were, you were very big on defense. Uh, now, you're, now you're the big guy on offense. So uh, can you talk about that transition and, and how you had to kind of switch your mindset uh, from batting down the ball to then trying to catch the ball and big plays? Yeah, so in high school, I kind of played everything just because my school, we weren't too good. So I was just like a pretty much an athlete. So uh, I, I guess I always had the ball skills. So once I went to college, I was like, I'm probably not going to go too far as a safety or to the quarterback. So I was like, um, I'll try to receive it out. And uh, it's worked out pretty well. So um, I guess the transition wasn't, wasn't too hard because going from safety to Receiver, you still have the ball skills. And, you know. I got a question. Maurice, what was going through your head as you were going down the sideline with that punt this past weekend? Uh, I mean, that hole opened up, and then what's through your head? Like, just go school. Go school. It was a lot going through my head, but even before the punt came, I had in my mind, like, I wasn't going to catch it no matter what. Yeah. Because I never knew if I was going to be the last play of my career or the last play of our season. And then I know I had the confidence to, like, make a play for my teammates. And they know I had the, uh, and they had the confidence in me to know that I could have the ability to make a play. So it felt good. Uh, everybody did their job. We had some great blocks, some great non-blocks. <laughs> Nah, because this morning, 7 o'clock that morning, my dad actually texted me. He was like, if you get a touchdown today, bring me the ball. So when I scored, I dropped the ball. And then when I tried to go pick it up, uh, dude from the Hall of Fame, he said, they're going to take the ball. So I was like, dang. <laughs> Maurice, can you talk about why hard times? Where, where did that come from? Uh, all right, so hard time. <laughs> Most people think it came from football, but... uh. It came from when I was first being born. My mom was in labor for like eight, nine hours. And uh, and then when she, I did finally want to come out, like the umbilical cord like wrapped around my neck. And then my grandma, she was there with my mom like the whole time she was in labor. And then like once I came out, my grandma just like, she she came, she called me hard time and that name just stuck with me since I was a kid, like since I was a baby. So everybody called me that. From our Zoom audience, do we have any questions for our Zoom audience? Go ahead, uh, Sam, please. Sam, come, please. 
Hey guys, question for all three of you, and maybe a simple question. Um, curious, uh, how I mean, how how much harder is it to to make it to this point, to make it to the championship in the league's first year and a team's first season? I didn't hear. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. What? Sam, can you go ahead and repeat the question, please? Yeah, uh, just curious from your perspective. I mean, how much harder is it to make it to this point? To make it to the championship in a league's first year and a team's oh. first season. Oh, it's uh, you know, it's it's always difficult and at any level to to make it to a championship. Um, you know, coach has, has talked a lot about that, uh, about you know the difficulties of getting there. And our our goal all year was to get there, no matter how how what our record, how we got there was to get here. And then once we got here, we wanted to show out and prove that. You know we were we were meant to be here so um you know there's challenges throughout the season you know we've dealt with with injuries um different guys rotating in and out um a really tough tough schedule a lot of really good football teams in this league um so each each week in and out um you got to bring your game and go try to go one and oh each week uh since the moment we got in birmingham coach bart uh, always stressed us the team that get it right the quickest is going to be the team that be the last standing when we get to Canton. And we just took it one day at a time uh, and just build, build each and every game and never never change nothing we did, whether we lost or not. We just learned from our mistakes and built off. And if we won, we just looked for things that we didn't do right to improve on. And we just got better and better, and we gelled at the right time. Uh, I definitely think it's a challenge when you only have three weeks of training camp and it's a whole new team, like we've never played together. But uh, I think the, the guys on this team did a good job coming together and gelling and you know, creating a bond and uh, going throughout the season, not having the ups and downs phase us. And you know, we just said we got to make it to the playoffs. And once we get there, it's every, every man for themselves. I'm feeling good. Um, I think it just got a little stinger to it. Probably just a little ligament bruise or anything, but I'm feeling good though. Training staff doing a good job just trying to help me get back right, so I'm feeling good. Um, Adam, uh, your guys' defensive line had a really strong game. Um, on Saturday, I felt like there were a lot of big moments where Fred was sort of stepping up into trouble and then you know, that affected his throw. Uh, I was wondering if you could speak to sort of how you guys played together as a unit and sort of played off of each other in that game. Uh, we just built chemistry from the start of training camp, uh, staying in our pass rush lanes, hopefully giving, uh, giving up pressure to allow this guy to pick a ball or Monty to pick the ball. Uh, Mozzie picked one. So like, we just, if we're not gonna get home, at least put some sort of pressure so he throws a errant ball so one of these guys can take it. Hey, uh, Channing, you know, all USFL uh, corner, and you're going up against uh, one of the best receivers in the league, all USFL, Victor Bolden. Uh, so. I, how are you expecting to kind of have that chemistry going? You know, you have to lock up him, or he's trying to, you know, break your ankle. So that's going to be a pretty uh, tough competition there. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, we actually trained together uh, coming out to the league, and then we played together in San Francisco. So um, it's just kind of like old days. You know, just same old practicing against each other, um, 
He's a great competitor. So it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. You know, it's always great to have you know, good competition to go against. So it's going to be fun. Uh, offensive guys. Obviously, you guys have been in Birmingham the last three months, same hotel room. How good does it feel to get out of a out of a new routine here, eat some different food, see some different things? You know, how, how pleasant has this been the last couple, uh, week or so? Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's been it's been cool. Um, I'm from Alabama, so you know, it's it's always good to be home, close to home. Um, but you know, being in a different location, you know, it's, it feels it feels normal. Um, normally, you travel football games and stuff, so. It's been it's been good, especially being here in Ohio. It's been, it's been cool. Yeah, I, I don't know about them, but that food in Alabama <laughs> <laughs> is different. I'm talking yeah. about every single day. I, I I probably tried to find somewhere new to eat. Yeah. Uh, it's I got to give it to y'all down there in Alabama. Y'all know how to cook. Yeah. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, so I mean I'm used to good food. My folks and them are from Mississippi and New Orleans, but man, you go to Alabama, it's just like a melting pot with everything. I know I probably put on about six pounds down there, so. Here, having some of the Northeast Ohio food, then. I mean, it's been cool. Uh, I went to Michigan, so <laughs> yeah, I it's been cool. I went to Michigan, so being in Ohio is kind of like, uh, but you know, it's um, it's definitely been great. Um, seeing the Hall of Fame, um, I like just you know, I like you know, history, so you know, going there has been fun. Uh, playing in the stadium has been fun. Just talking to people around the city has been cool, so yeah, I like it. Food's convenient, everything's yeah. like really close. Me and him, we got our little. Favorite spot yeah. already we found out here. So, yeah, I'm enjoying Ohio right now. Yeah. So this question for all three of you. You talked about your experience being in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Birmingham. Adam, I'm going to start with you. Man, that was cool. Uh, being able to go there it just checks off another thing on my bucket list. Uh, I've been to the Baseball Hall of Fame, so I think this one was a little better. Um, yeah, I'd say, I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been great for sure. Um, I came when I was in high school. I kind of have a little story with that one, but um, just came when I was going to the Michigan camp. I ended up going to Michigan, but um, coming here and be able to see you know, just, just all the artifacts and everything has been cool. Like, every time we come up here, I want to go back up and just see everything again. It's always miss something, but yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely been great. Um, I think it was a surreal moment for me um, coming out of college, going to the NFL. My career's kind of been like up and down. I started off as a corner went safety and then changed to linebacker. So honestly, I, I had dreams of being a Hall of Fame safety in college and came out, switched different positions. And I just didn't think like, at one point I was like, man, that's far fetched. I just need to make a team and just play. But actually going back up there and, you know, with Coach Bart um, a couple years ago, I got a chance to get coached and mentored by the greatest linebacker of all time, Mike Singletary. And it changed my life. Um, and actually going up there and being able to see the, a lot of those guys, uh, Steve Atwater as well, that, you know, he put his hands on me when I was at Denver. You know, guys like that, it just and it makes it surreal, and it, it's, it's amazing to actually be able to be in the presence of those guys and know that it's real and it's actually attainable. So Coach Andrews, the last uh, press conference after the win on Saturday really gave the whole defense the switch. We killers. I'm not going to even lie to you. When we on the field, like, we cool. Off the field, we you you get quiet guys, you get chill guys. You know, A-Rod, man, you don't even know he in the room. He's so cool. Strip, he quiet, he cool. A lot of the guys on defense are cool, quiet. We all hang with each other. We go everywhere with each other. But when we get on that field, I guarantee you, you put your hands on one of us, you got 50 of us walking on the field. That's just how we rock, man. And I love those guys, like brothers. I think the playoff wise, you know, defense has made that step up. Um, I think a lot of us seen, I think it was the last game uh, against the Generals, they put the, our uh, stats up saying we had the last, the worst defense basically in the in the league. Um, I think we took that as a challenge. Um, we seen that and just said, you know what, like, you know, it's like a uh, case of this, 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 uh, you got a chance to go 1 0 in these games. So that whole stat goes away and you start a whole new stat. So. I think every week, you know, we try to prepare like we're you know, the best team you know, in the USFL. But yeah, I think we just, like he said, flip the switch going into the playoffs. Uh, I think the two first games left a sour taste in our mouth a little bit. So everybody just came out hitting people. Uh, just kept going all four quarters.
And, you know, I want to say, you know, some of the antics that they did to our team before the game, we never addressed it. We never said anything by it. But, you know, when you're in a championship setting, champs should be treated a certain type of way. I've been in a lot of championship settings, and I feel like our team was disrespected in a lot of ways. But we got our disrespect back, and we still got a chip on our shoulder. We're going to get real disrespectful on Sunday. But when you are in the presence of champions, treat them as champions with respect. I don't care if it's four of them, I don't care if it's two, but it's going to be one at the end of the day. And we'll see y'all on Sunday. So you are the North Division champions. Are there any questions for these three defensive uh, players from the Zoom audience? Sam, is that you again? You want another question? Yes, uh, please. Um, talking about having a little bit of a chip on your shoulder, I'm curious, how would you guys describe the brand of Philly Stars football? We swaggy and aggressive. We we, we swaggy and aggressive. We're going to put it on. It's going to look like, Oh, they're real finessey guys. And boom, you get hit in the mouth. <laughs> and it's every play. That's every player on our team. A lot of guys, I've seen them from young guys coming out of college. So now I'm 28 now, and I've seen some of these guys. Me and Strip, we've been on the same side of the ball, and people don't know for three years. In Hamilton, in the CFL, we were together. In the Spring League, we were together. We train together in Atlanta. We eat together. So we eat, sleep, and breathe together. So there's nothing that... He not going to tell me on the field, or I'm not going to tell him. But, yeah, we swaggy, but we're aggressive, though. Um, I said we got a lot of hungry guys, um, a lot of young, young, hungry guys that haven't had the opportunity, you know, to play at the next level yet. So um, that brand of football is just guys that are excited, really have that big, like you said, that chip on your shoulder. Um, just everybody has the right mindset, you know, the, the, same, the same goal at the end of the day is win a championship get to the next level, things like that. So I think the brand of football is just guys who are really just honest, you know, hungry and honest. Uh, I think going over what you said, I think we're like one of the smaller defenses, so I feel like we're overlooked a lot for next level and probably our whole careers. So I think that just adds to the chip on it. So they're like, yeah, we're going to get this done. And we don't care how big we are, we're going to get you. <laughs> well, gentlemen, congratulations. Well, again, um, extremely proud of our of our players and uh, our coaching staff. Uh, I think that you know combined the relationships that they've built uh, in the last eleven weeks have uh, contributed to uh, the success of this team and. Uh, we're, uh, you know, we, we had it in our mind from the beginning that, that we would find a way here. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I remember addressing this team uh, before we had clinched a playoff berth uh, when we had lost our starting quarterback uh, and we were making a transition uh, to the, to, to the to case and, how we needed to support Case and everything that that, that that we did, and that the record at the time, it, it it was what it was, and the goal was to be one of two in the division at the end of the regular season, and they accomplished that with two weeks to play. So um, that that was the way we approached it, um, and you know we're our record is what it is. Um, it, it, but we, we feel like that on any given day, any given time, uh, pr particularly in pro football, and it's, I think that's, uh, synonymous wherever you, uh, have or find pro football, uh, that any team can beat any team on any given day. Um, it, in this, in the USFL, things are on a pretty level playing surface, uh, Everybody makes the same amount of money. Um, all the basic conditions as far as practice facility, hotel, meals, everything's the same. So 
Um, if it's the same, then anything can happen on any on any given game day, and um, that's the approach that our guys have taken all year. Uh, that combined with the fact that I, I I almost insist on on the fact that they keep it fun. That I, you know we we talk about it often that uh, someplace somewhere they they were introduced to a funny looking ball that has points on each end of it. And they played that day. And then the next day they went back and played again because it was fun. And I, I never want them to ever lose sight of, of that part of the game. So, you know, these guys have come a long way. Uh, they fought through a lot of adversity. Uh, every football team that I've ever been associated with or been around uh, they always have to fight through adversity. So uh, we tell them, let's let's respond when adversity raises its ugly head. Let's not react. Uh, if you respond, that's a that's a positive thing. Reacting, you get negative things. So that's that's kind of the mindset of this football team, and uh, I'm very proud of them. They they endured through uh, a lot of different things, a lot of challenges. Uh, some challenges that that other teams in the league didn't have to didn't have to face. So um, these guys are weathered, and they're they're they'll be ready on uh, on Sunday. Coach Andrews, you your uh, coaching resume is very very much extensive from the NFL, CFL, NFL Europe. What do you take away from the USFL uh, just as far as your journey through? Well, first of all, the the this. This league uh, was put together by people that that understand uh, what what an alternative football league uh, is about, and uh, the plan has been uh, one of the best that I've ever seen, um, as far as uh, you know, survival of of a, of a startup league is going to be based on the financial model, the business model, um, and you know. The ownership of this league, uh, they they hired people and brought people in that that one understand football and two understand what how how you do it and make it make it work uh, from from a business model um, and it, it's it's people that have maybe experienced uh, the other part of it uh, of, of losing a league or not having one make it. Uh, but I think that they did a great job of selecting the people. You know, Eric Shanks is, was, I mean, instrumental in picking the right people. Brian Woods and Daryl Johnston and, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, uh, people that understand what it takes. Uh, I think that that's been the difference, um, it, it, you know, from my perspective. And, and I've seen, like, I, like you said, I've been, I've been at a couple different places. <laughs> so... Um, and that was kind of my goal as a coach. I wanted to experience every level if I could. And, um, you know, I, I, I've had that, I've pretty much had that opportunity um, along the way because any, any experience is good experience. Well, you know, even bad experience is good experience. So um, it, it, th this has been a tremendous, a tremendous experience along the way. An amazing job by the people that put it together. Uh, they should be commended. It's just, it's been, it's been awesome. And it's been, it's put, the bottom line to me is, is it good for the players? Yes. And, you know, these guys really, and I, I address that with them from time to time that, hey, you, you don't, you got to think about what it takes to give you one rep, one rep at this level on the field and it it takes a lot of people and it takes a lot of money to do it and um, and they appreciate it believe me hey coach uh, i had the pleasure of talking to chris roland uh friday during the uh, museum tour and talking about the game he told me you know he said third time's a charm he goes we're gonna get them this time we have some special stuff cooked up so can you just speak on, on third time's a charm and, and how was it a charm and, and some of the stuff you, you did execute that way well um you know, whenever you play an opponent, especially back to back, um, it, it and, and you know Mike Riley did a good job of preparing his football team too, um, and and he's he's experienced those back to backs like that. So, um, 
one of the things that we kind of focused on was not only the first game with them, that, that was really early in the season, and that was the game we lost uh, Brian Scott in. Um, and so, you know, we had to make some adjustments between then. But in, in the last game of the season and then the first, you know, this, this last weekend as far as the playoff game, and um, we, you, you focus on really I, I start with what we did well in the game the previous week, uh, and then you think about, well, if you did it well, they're going to try to take it away. And is there is there a play here or there, or is there a, a defensive adjustment, or is there something in the special team game that that's going to allow us to to use that information? And and yeah, we we had some things where uh, you know all the way around in all three phases where we were we we had prepared things and uh, that we that we felt and then sold to our players as hey, this is. This is something that's gonna gonna help us be successful. You know, if we get good at this this particular adjustment, this could be a difference in the game. And um, and we had some that we you know we you always end up with with uh, things that go uh, unused. But uh, we had a couple that the situation never never popped up, or or we would have we, we would have shown a little more. So uh, I think that that you use that stuff to your advantage. And um, uh, you know, I don't know about, you know, third time, this and that. I've been involved in uh, NFL playoffs where, uh, you know, we, we we played a divisional opponent in 99 for the third time that year in the AFC championship game. And, and we had won both of the previous two games, uh, both divisional games. Uh, and then we faced them at their place, uh, in, in the AFC Championship, we won the third time. So it can go both ways. Uh, I, I think it, it it all comes down to how how do you how do you prepare, and and can you get some adjustments that are gonna that you can sell to your players that hey th th this is this could be the difference you know and I think that that's probably you know Matt what he's thinking about boy we're, we've got some things we're preparing that are gonna be. Pre we we had, we had already come through a whole week of practice at that time, so yeah, he was excited about some of the stuff. So. Hey, Coach Andrews, uh, last week played the Stallions, uh, week five. Yeah. Fast start, uh, things went a little south in the second half. Uh, that seemed to have kind of for you, for your, for your team, kind of sparked a four and one run to end the year, uh, kind of on a high note. How do you? yourselves from week five to where you are now championship weekend? Well, you, you would hope as a coach and as a football team that, uh, you know, that you can get better every week. Um, and we've, we've had a couple, couple weeks where we go, you know what, guys, we, we kind of stayed the same. We, we need to pick it up, you know, pick it up and, you know, take it to the, to that next plateau, you know? So, uh, but we're a different football team than we were the first, the first time we played them. I, I felt uh, you know, pretty comfortable in that game. You know, uh, I felt like that looking back at it and, you know, you, you revisit it now as you start to prepare to play an opponent again, you want to see well, what would they do the first time. And um, I, I, I felt good about the way we played to, to, a, to a certain extent. I don't think the score was indicative of how close the game was. You know, uh, at the end of that game, um, they had the ball on our end of the field and, we we were actually trying to let them score. That was our only offer. It was our only chance to have a to, to be able to win the game. And you know, you, you saw these three guys, and you know, getting that message to them. What do you mean we want to let them score? You know, so um, you know, but that's what we save the time. Let them score. We'll score. We'll take the fourth and twelve. We'll get the ball back and score again. You know, but you need time to do that. And um, but but it it. We we used up the times like three times in a row. Guys, let them score. You know, trying to get that message into it was was difficult. So, um, no, we look forward to it. We look forward to this one with them. Yeah. Arguably, coach and the stars have uh, utilized our unique rule set in the USFL probably better than almost any other team. They were the first team to convert a three point conversion. So. Are there any questions here inside the room? Okay. Uh, what about our Zoom audience, Sam? Did I see your uh, uh, Oscar? You have a question, Oscar? Yes, thank you. Good. Thank you so much. Hello, Coach Oscar Heriga from Claro Sport. Here in Mexico and Latin America, football is a great passion. 
And you have a Mexican heritage player, Luis Aguilar. His dad is from Guadalajara. He's the reason why the Stars have many fans at this side of the world. Could you say some words to all those fans who will be following the championship game next Saturday? Thank you, coach. Muchas gracias. Give some out. Luis. Luis, yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, we, we picked up Luis, uh, I think it was after week four, uh, and he has been tremendous for us. Tremendous addition. Um, he, he's a, you know, as a kicker, you know, sometimes those guys are a little different, you know, kickers are a little different, you know, and Luis isn't, he, you know, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't be able to know the difference between him and a linebacker. He's got that, that focus. He's got that, uh, he's got his jaw set and he's, you know, he's ready when you send him on the field, he's calm, he's collected. Um, and you know. If, if he, if we're in a position where we need a, a, a kick to win a game, I, I have every, I, I've got all kinds of confidence in, in Luis. Uh, he, and then uh, to top it off, um, you know, in, in this, in this uh, league, because of the roster size, if you can find a guy that uh, can dual roll, uh, kick and punt, uh, then you, you know, on game day, that gives you another active roster position uh, to to have either on offense or defense. So uh, that that Luis allows us to be able to do that because he's as good a punter as he is a kicker, uh, and uh, that that is a it's a big that's a big thing to have. And um, we're we're we were very excited to find Luis at the point in the season when we did, um, and he's come in and. Uh, uh, I done a tremendous job for us. Uh yeah. Uh you know, we're we're the red and gold uh with pride because uh we, we, we want to make you proud that you're a that you're a Philadelphia Star fan. Well, why don't we uh, finish up our last question for coach with uh, Sam Cohen for the Philadelphia Inquirer. Sam? Hey coach, I'd ask a similar question to a few of your players, but I'm curious. How would you describe the brand and the culture that you've built uh, with the Philly Stars, the type of brand of football you guys play? Well, I think we're, uh, uh, you know, you know, defensively, uh, we're, we're coming into our own at the, at the right time of the season. Um, we were, you know, I, we're not the biggest uh, defensive football team, but uh, we, we've got, we've got guys that are very difficult to block. Uh, we've got, we've got it. Uh, you know, Jordan Moore, he, he, he went through his, his pedigree. He started out as a corner when he went to safety, then he went to linebacker and he also heard how much he likes to eat food. So that's, that's, that was his progression to linebacker. But, um, but he's a guy that can run with, with wide receivers. He, so, you know, we may be small, but we're quick, we're fast. And we, we have an affinity to find the football and arrive, uh, you know, arrive with some with, with what they say be be upset when you when you arrive at the football and we we, we have that ability to do that uh, offensively we're, we're a team that uh, we we take pride in the fact that we're gonna we're gonna create uh, some discomfort from from our opposing defense um, we're gonna spread you out uh, we're gonna see if you're willing to uh, use your linebackers on wide receivers, or if you're going to substitute, uh, we'll go five wide receivers, no running backs, uh, and see, hey, how are you going to adjust? Are you going to try to play us in, man? Because if you are, then you've got to have linebackers covering wide receivers. If you're going to, uh, if you're going to uh, you know, go the other way and put extra DBs on the field, we're going we're gonna to pull one of those wide receivers back into the backfield and run the ball at you with him because he's just as good of a, uh, a runner with the ball as anybody else that we have. So, uh, in in uh, so we're we're going to try to make you make a hard decision on defense, and um, we're 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 as willing to throw the ball as we are to run the ball. Uh, so, uh, pick your poison. We're 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 going to try to take advantage of it, and 
I, I, I tell our guys, whether we're on offense, defense, or on a special team, that quick, pri- quick precise, and fast should describe our, 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 our unit that's on the field. And they, they really take it to heart. So you're going to see a, a team that's going to be going as fast as they can possibly go. And uh, this team's done a great job of that. They've practiced that way all year, and uh, they've been playing that way. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday in the championship yeah. game. Yeah, look forward to it. Thanks. So next up.